안녕하세요. 이존 치과의 손영희입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Son Myung Lee of Eagle Dental Clinic. Let's look at live surgical case. Let's look at x-ray first. In the case of this patient, in number 22, 23, 13, 14, these teeth were actually congenitally missing. For number 22 and 23, implants were placed to address them. Today, we're going to address number 13 and 14, which are retained primary teeth. The patient complained of pain in teeth number 54 in number 14 tooth area. We could not wait longer and implant placement was decided. When we come across this kind of patient, Permanent teeth were congenitally missing and there were prolonged retained primary teeth. In this case, bone may be immature in a lot of cases. In this case, you can anticipate a thin ridge and there can be difficulty in implant placement due to horizontal bone insufficiency. If you take a look at CT in number 53, there's lesion. Regular diameter implant may be difficult in terms of buccolingual width. When placing implant, the mistake we make frequently is that we at times make fenestration defect unintentionally. In number 54, as shown, if done well, regular diameter implant may be possible. If you look at the intraoral image, number three and four, attrition is very severe and there is very severe carriers as well. The plan was to do extraction, do immediate implant placement and address the pitting edema below cervical area. The goal was to make as much buccal bone as possible to assure long-term stability of implant. That was the purpose of the surgery. Let's look at the surgical clip.
We've watched the surgical clip and now let's review it. Extractions were done. You can see that this is a very favorable ridge. You can see that there is very severe depression here. Flap was reflected. As you can see, there is a torus-like structure here. I believe this is torus, and there is a very severe depression below that. Implants were placed in number 13, 3.5 diameter, and in number 14, 4.0 diameter implants were placed, TS3 were placed, cortical bone perforation was performed. On top of this, bone grafting was done to regenerate the bone. I do not believe we need to do this up to the top. The healing abutments were connected. The implant the top position is here. So there is a sufficient amount of buccal bone amount for implant stability. For further stability, I believe it is better if we form bone here. Cortical bone perforation was performed. Sausage technique was used. In the apex area, bone tag was used to fixate the membrane. AOS collagen was used in the apex area first. On the coronal side, AOS and particulate bone graft materials were used, and on top, bone tag was used once again. By doing this, you can get maximum stabilization of the graft site and get the favorable bone regeneration. That's why sausage technique was done. Suture was complete. In the case the healing becomes a submerged, after a certain healing period, the healing abutment becomes exposed in a lot of cases. If healing abutment continues to be submerged, you can do simple gingivectomy using laser and there will be no issue in doing prosthesis delivery. This is post-op image. Two bone tags were used to fixate the membrane. If you take a look at CT, implant has been placed in number three on the buccal side. Sufficient bone graft materials can be observed. In number four, you can see significant amount of bone graft material in place. When the patient has thin bone or in the case of interior area, augmentation amount that seems quite excessive is necessary because a lot of remodeling occurs during healing process. In order to overcome the remodeling amount, a significant amount of bone graft is required. By doing this, we can prevent remodeling line becoming in contact with the implant itself. In the case of this patient, a prosthesis will be delivered four months after implant placement. After delivery, I would like to talk about the patient's cervical contour if opportunity arises. Thank you for joining me in looking at the surgical clip.